Hello, this is Bryce from SmiteWorks and welcome back to our Quick Start Guide video series. This is part two of the GM options screen. Remember to go back and watch part one before watching this part. The link is up there in the cards. Combat Ally Health Player Display. You can change to show how much detail you want your players to know about the other player characters. Detailed will tell them how many hit points they have left. Status will show them just a approximate and off will show them nothing. I leave this on default just because it's nice for your players to know what's happening to them and the other players. Auto NPC initiative is an option that I highly recommend changing. By default, it is set to group. If you drag an encounter into the combat tracker, all enemies in that encounter will have the same initiative, which will make them go all at once. I change this to on because then each individual NPC will get their own turn in initiative. Enemy health player display is the same as players, uh, but you will be changing if players can see the health of enemies. I like this on status, but again, it's up to personal preference. NPC numbering. This option determines whether a unique number is applied to NPCs added to the combat tracker. Append will use the next available number in sequence, one, two, three, four, five, so on. Random will choose a random number for the enemy in case you want to throw your players off to how many enemies there really are and off will not number them at all and they'll all be named the exact same thing. I just leave this how it is, but I can definitely see why people would want the other. Wound categories. This option will determine when using status view how detailed the explanation of uh, their wound is. Simple will give you things such as healthy, wounded, heavy, dying. And more detailed will give you healthy, light, moderate, heavy, critical, and dying. NPC rolls. This will change the damage done when NPCs make attacks. If it's on variable, they will actually roll their attacks. If it is on fixed, they will use the averages. Ring bell on turn does what it sounds like. For your players, when it is their turn, a little ding bell sound will play in their ear, letting them know it is their turn. Show turn order determines how well your players know the turn order in combat. When set to all, all players will see both player and NPCs in the combat tracker. Friendly will only show friendly players in the combat tracker, not the NPCs, and off will not show any information as to turn order at all. Bar colors is for the health bars and the less detailed status indicator. Standard changes from green to yellow to red, and tyrant is a more gradual change from green to light green to yellow to orange, and then finally to red. This is an option to determine how much detail your players want to know on the status of NPCs and players. Show effect on notice will determine if a creature's effects on them will be displayed in chat on their turn. Show notice to players is directly tied with show effects on notice. This one will determine whether or not your players can see all of the information just from friendlies or none of it at all. Skip dead not ally as it sounds will auto skip the turns of anybody that is not allied with the players if they are dead. Skip hidden actor will auto skip the turns of anyone hidden in the combat tracker. Stop at round start will give you a little bit extra, uh, we'll call it grace period at the end. When you go to move the round forward at the end of a round of combat, it will you will have to hit it twice before it will come back around to combat in case you want to pause in between rounds of combat. All right, token effects. We're going to move through these a little bit quicker because they're a little bit simpler. Show effects will show icons, icons on hover, marks, marks on hover or off uh, for GMs. So if you want to see what effects are on any tokens on the map, uh, just leave it on icons. This will also, same thing goes for show health. This will let you decide if you want a dot a dot on hover, a health bar, or a health bar on hover. Same thing goes with show ally effects. These are options specifically for players, but they are exactly the same as the ones that I just listed. 
Um, you can set these to your discretion. Auto scale to grid will auto scale the tokens to the grid. The default is 80% of the grid and that's a good scale to leave just a little bit of extra room uh, on the tokens. Obviously you can change it up to 100% if you want or turn it off and they will not auto scale. Effect icon size, the same uh, effects from show effects on all of those settings just determines the size of the icons on them. Facing indicator, we're going to open up a map to show you what this does. We'll talk more about opening maps and all things maps later on in this series. We're gonna open this up by default. If you hold shift and scroll your mouse wheel over an icon to determine facing, it will rotate the entire token. Facing indicator, however, when turned on, will provide a little arrow to show what direction your character is facing and not spin their token. Fog of War determines whether or not lighting and uh, walls will obstruct things for players, everybody, including enemies or just players, as I said. Um, leaving it on players is a perfect performance option. Uh, this will save your computer a lot of stress. Party vision and movement allows the party to see what any other party member can see. And show name will show the names of tokens on maps. We're gonna come up and open one again just to show the options. Off, obviously no names. If we change it to tooltip, it will show on your mouse. If we change it to title, it will just appear above your icon. If we could do title hover, it will appear above your character, but only when you are hovering over them. And we can close down this section. Finally, the house rules section. All of these are optional extra rules that you can use in your games. Attack fumble and crit tables will automatically roll on fumble and crit tables when you fumble or crit. Auto death rolls, I recommend setting this to off to allow your players to make them manually, but it will auto roll death saving throws on players turns if they are knocked down. NPC hit points, standard will use the standard hit points. Max will use the maximum hit points for said characters or random will actually physically roll the hit dice for NPCs and monsters. I recommend setting this to random just to add some spice to your games. Roll initiative each round will re-roll initiative every round of combat. Uh, massive system shock when turned on will use the alternative rule from the dungeon master's guide for massive damage. Diagonal distance will change how diagonal distances are measured in your game. Default and one times are the same thing. Uh, moving diagonally will count as five feet as per D&D 5e's rules. 1.5 will measure it closer to 3.5e and Pathfinder. Moving a diagonal distance counts as one and a half times the amount that moving a, a horizontal or vertical square would be. And raw will not measure squares at all and will measure the actual distance. Use currency weight will change whether or not currency weight is taken into effect. You can change your PC's attunement slots. You can change encumbrance rules, uh, healing variants, and inspiration slots. And that is all of the main options for Fantasy Grounds. We have a couple more options down at the bottom of the screen that we will touch on. Background decals allows you to easily change the background of your game to images that you currently have. Currencies allows you to set up the weight and value of different currencies in your games, including adding new and unique ones. Death markers will allow you to change the death markers on maps, but they are set up by default. Languages will allow you to customize, change, and add new languages as well as change how current languages in your rule set appear and all of that message of the day allows you to add a message of the day that will be sent to your players every time they log in setup we briefly touched on this screen shows upon load gives you options to user guides forums allows you to load modules quickly and uh, gives you an extra option to get into this option screen. And finally, token lights um, allows you to change what 
uh, token lights do and how much they affect things. We will talk more about token lights and lighting when we touch upon maps in a future video. This will conclude part two of our quick start guide video on the options menu in Fantasy Grounds. If you found this video helpful, remember to leave a like and remember to hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell icon to stay up to date when these guides are posted. Remember, you can always learn more at fantasygrounds.com.